Hi team, a welcome to 10 Talks. Today's conversation is coach to coach and we have the gift of having Lynn and Julie, both sports life coaches on our team and also coaching out there in the world in terms of making a difference and so grateful to both of you for that and grateful to our conversation today. Really, this is heart to heart conversation, what you wish you would have known, words of wisdom, just that peace out to coaches so that it's a coach to coach conversation. So Lynn, thank you for joining us. Julie, thank you for joining us. Team, I want to catch you up on where we are. Both Lynn and Julie have children, young children, they have littles, and they are managing their competitive spirit as a coach, the things that they want as women in their career, what they want personally in their family lives and for themselves and philanthropically, they are doing this. They are having this conversation as part of their sports philanthropy to really give hope to you and to anyone listening in terms of, can you relate to what they're going through as coaches? So today's conversation, I wanna introduce sports life coaching and our 3D model because both of you I've had the honor of coaching you through your careers and just want to talk about kind of the difference between women coaches and men coaches, because I do have the honor of coaching both. And what I have found is that women coaches, sport coaches, um, usually get involved in sports life coaching or find us when they're struggling and when things aren't going well, when they kind of have tried to do everything themselves and then figure out that's not working, not from a desire perspective, they've tried everything, it's almost just exhaustion and I just can't keep going, so I wanna do this, I wanna find something different. They don't know exactly what sports life coaching is, but it's worth a try because they know that they're not doing the job that they wanna do, they're not winning in their careers. Versus male coaches, find having a coach just part of what they do. They immediately become a coach and they say, of course I want a coach. And they schedule their workouts with me and they don't ever <clears throat> miss them. It's just a matter of let's get this done. And they're very intentional about making sure they are supported. Versus women, we are very intentional about making sure everybody else is supported and we don't necessarily take great care of ourselves. So Lynn, as you watch your film and think about your journey, how have you gone from really not having that support to recognizing how much you need it and how valuable it is for you to win? Oh, wow. As, as you're speaking, I always just think of the, the examples in my own life, which is pretty fascinating having a family a husband who does just that and isn't even in, I mean, he started doing some high school coaching, but nowhere near the level. So it, it is pretty fascinating. So for me, um, gosh, I don't know where to start. Let's start with your story in terms of the examples that are showing up for you. Ah, well, examples would be similar to what you said when you're, when you're really struggling and you're trying to find ways to to climb and either be at the top or stay at the top so my story we were pretty inconsistent inconsistent with our staffing just with we had one position uh low paid and then fundraising for another position which eventually worked itself out just took about eight years to get there <laughs> um and, and then we're I talking had... D1 field hockey. Oh, yeah. So let's just be intentional about as agents of change, really how long this can take. And then in that eight year span had two kids with no maternity leave. And that was my choice because our staff was in transition. So when you're looking at, yes, I was starting my own family. However, to me, my team, the program was family as well, right? So like you said, you're building not only competing on the field, but these young women into life leaders for down the road. So you want to set them up for success too. And with no one running the program, you'd go back a couple years just by taking a couple months off. And then my second kid was a couple weeks, two weeks before a season started. 
and we were there on day one. So, and why is, and that's when the life coaching really showed up and was huge because it was consistency for me, for a team and, and you need that. That's how your communication builds, that how, that's how you create any kind of structure or rituals and your routines. So thinking back, like if I had had that in place, how powerful would that have been? However, you're again, you're just in need and you're searching for something because you know you're not gonna go down and you're gonna find a way. Um, it's something I wish I would have had. And then I know even listening to you speak running a program and even where I am now, that's one of my most important things with these young women is letting them, what does networking look like? Having your, I mean, our awards, I had a coach text me the other day, what awards did you give at the end of the season? Which I didn't think much of, but our awards we are named after our former players. Why? Because you could put a name and a face. So then this past year when we gave basically like an unsung hero award to the, and was a new one named after an old player, they reached out automatically and they were so proud because they could see what it looked like. And just little things like that, you're thinking if we could build what networking looks like, and yes, team is valuable. However, it's taking care of you. And then when you're done, making sure you take care of someone else. I just, that's one of the most important things with females in sports and you can see it on social media like the the boys I work with that are going to on to the next level they'll tag everybody almost like this thank you I got you bro and the the girls is more about self or you get hearts every now and then but uh, it's it's just so important and the you talked about the 3d model with sports life coaching it just these little things that are so powerful that can make such a big difference. And if I had known, I would have 100% started that earlier. So team, just to catch you up on the 3D model, it's personally for significance, professionally for success and philanthropically for service. So that's really our definition of whole person. And as a competitively great person going for really greatness and being competitive, usually we're one dimensional. We're all about our careers and that's our identity and that's who we are. And the new thinking with sports life coaching is to really train your whole person to honor who you are. So when you think about it personally, it's really who, who you are, what's important to you. That's that for significance component. And then professionally is what you do. It isn't your identity. It's literally what you do. And then philanthropically, it's how you make a difference in our world, really how you give hope. So that's that 3D model that we introduce. And it's new. It's a new muscle to not just be one dimensional and still know that it's going to work out okay. And from a well-being perspective, that's our formula to win well-being is to go 3D. So that's what you're going to hear us just begin to talk about in process. So Julie, as you watch your film, and think about it, when you and I met, you were a division one track and field coach, and then you moved into the business of sport, and now you're transitioning into next. So you've been very much on that journey of very high level development for yourself, for other athletes, and what have you discovered? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I think the first thing that comes to mind was like to what Lynn said, like if we had this level of support when we first started, how different it would have looked. Um, unfortunately, at least in my experience, stepping into coaching, it was just immediate imposter syndrome. Um, mm -hmm. And it's real, right? Because there were, I heard she only got the job because she's a woman. Uh, you know, how, just because she ran fast doesn't mean she can be a good coach. Like there's much more to coaching, right? things that would have never been said to a male, at least my assumption, walking into that role. And so when you start a path with that weighing on you, you aren't honoring yourself because you're trying to be something different. And I found those first few years when I took over the program at Georgetown, I was, I was trying to be something different. I was trying to model behaviors that I had seen at, from coaches and I wasn't honoring who I was. Um, and that was really when I found sport life coaching, how 
my, my actual coaching changed so much. And the connection I then grew with the team changed because when I first stepped into coaching, it was like, I need to do what this coach taught me to do. And I was schooled by old school. So I was like, oh, I got to be this hard ass. That's the only way to be a great coach is to be a total hard ass. And sorry, excuse my language, but <laughs> that was, that was what I was schooled in. And so I just assumed that that was the recipe for success. And the only recipe for success is honoring yourself, right? And then, and giving your heart and meeting your athletes where you are, like, you're not going to rob the competitiveness out of them if you connect with them deeply. Um, and I always thought if I gave too much, if I opened up, if I let them open up, that I was going to like soften them, like somehow I was going to soften them. And then on race day, they weren't going to be ready to go. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. But that was an incredible breakthrough for me as a coach was, was just honoring who I was so I could show up as my full self to them. Well, and what a gift as a winning strategy is to bring our authentic self. And what's so beautiful about women and certainly men coaches as well, we're not the experts in men coaching. So we're going to stick to what we know, which is women coaching. And so, you know, we bring so much heart. We have so much heart. We don't always bring so much heart because we're afraid of it. And so we're operating out of fear versus out of love. And you know, it, to me, we're just completely robbing ourselves and the generation of women that we have the honor of being involved with because we're leaving our most valuable asset out thinking that that doesn't make us competitive. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what a gift to anchor into, okay, let's be our authentic self, bring our heart, bring our minds, bring our competitive spirit. The next question is, we haven't even had the opportunity to be authentic. Because Julie, as you said it so beautifully, we've been emulating who we think we're supposed to be so that we can be successful like they are. So where do we even start to honor our authentic self and does society and our careers and every place that we're fitting into, are they ready for that? Are they coached up for that? Like this is quite a journey of change that we're introducing. So Lynn, your thoughts. It, it's such a good question because I know as a coach, that was like what, and we, I think we've had conversations about that. I want them to be themselves, right? So I'd rather them um, fail hard and fall down and, and in between those lines, that should be a space. And within our group, we should be able to do that. And then I do remember feeling bipolar at moments too. So Julie, like you're saying, right? Intensity and standards, so important. And that is a part of who I am in my, in, in coaching. But then all of a sudden, you know, they need that, like the high fives and the love and the, mm -hmm. the fuel to say, you can do this, which at, at one point, because I remember telling my team, I'm like, you probably think I'm bipolar. <laughs> like, I need your help. <laughs> this is what I'm, you need to step up and celebrate. And this is what it looks like. And we, and we had that discussion and that was probably the like, Carla, please come help me because I, I do have this big heart and deeply care about them. However, I feel like if that's what shows up, then we don't raise the bar as high because we miss that intensity. And especially when you're growing a program, you're you're teaching new behaviors and then you're raising the bar so it looks a little bit different every year so we didn't have this big tradition where our group already knew how to do that for newcomers so kind of going through this process having that support team just like you would on the field and having your positions and your roles i do feel like naturally and i don't i almost felt like i often ask myself is it just me it's just me who does that is it us what how, how would you do it differently um like i felt like it was on me and i had to take this lead and get other people on board because typically if you asked once or twice it didn't happen so you had to do it first so they got excited and then wanted to help or believed that it was worth it so i often just kept on adding stuff onto the plate because i knew it was important versus 
really like Carla, you, you mentioned using the resource. I don't know. You, I just end up caring, caring a lot looking back and you're trying to figure out, well, how would I have done it differently? And at this point, the only 100% thing I do know is having a coach, sports life coaching, and being able to talk through that, huge. Well, and then you've gotten certified. Now both of you are certified and you did that inside your careers. So you were busy, you're doing things, you're adding one more thing. That's another thing that women do an amazing job of is we keep leveling up. We keep challenging ourselves because that's that competitive spirit. And Julie, you have been such a, I don't want to use the word fighter because I think <laughs> you're just, such a champion. I just would go to such a champion heart. I mean, I think of the Olympian in you and I think of really you being an Olympic champion for your family, for your community, for the world. And yet there's a lot of hurt that goes with that challenge and that goes with that push. And so share with us a bit of your heart from that perspective. Yeah, I think it's like, when you lead with your heart, you also are vulnerable, right? And so learning to lead with your heart, um, it just opens you up in a different way. And I think that's always been me. I'm like, everything is on my sleeve. Like, you know who I am. My mom said to me the other day, she's like, I've never heard you tell a lie in your life because you're just, that's always who you were as a child was just like, hey, I just wanted to tell you I said something bad in school. And like, I have to tell everybody all of the things all the time. Um, but that is hard, right? Because when you tell all and you're vulnerable, and, and that may not always be what champion heart is. But in my world, that means I'm always heart first, right? And that can make it an, a little bit of an emotional roller coaster at times. Um, but it's also led me to where I am. Um, and I think being a mother, having a family, like my heart is, is grounded differently now, mm -hmm. you know, whereas my heart when I was an athlete and even in the start of coaching was always about like wanting to be the best and putting all my energy so far forward into that. And now I ground completely differently, right? I'm like, if this doesn't recenter me and if, if what I'm choosing to do doesn't fulfill me in a way that like I have to give more right I have to sacrifice more if I'm going to be away from my family so my heart now really is led by my family by my kids and by my husband um and that champion heart is just a little bit different um but it also puts me in a space where it's like I can see where I can see where my focuses end up um because I lead hard in that direction right like I'm at a, a, you know, pivot to next moment and I don't know what next is, um, but I know that my heart is going to be like really far into it because that's how I've led, you know, all, through all these years. Carla, the one point I wanted to make from earlier was, um, and just kind of backing up to the start of, of, of career and coaching is um, we, we're still, and I see, we see a lot more of it. We're still in certain spaces where we, don't see a lot of behavior from women or women in coaching. And I think that's why we come in, at least in my experience, why we come in trying to emulate other behavior or doing something differently or, or trying to be like the guys. Mm -hmm. We also were, grew up in a generation where if there were female coaches, a lot of them were, were acting like men, yeah. you know, or acting more masculine to kind of fit in or have that mm -hmm. kind of gruffness. And so we're in this new space yeah. where I think women are starting to learn how to lead for themselves, for the people that they're serving. And I, I'm starting to see it in our world in track and field. I see it in, in the collegiate side and the NCAA side. We have some really powerful women coaches and they are so authentic to themselves. Mm. And I love that. And like, they are just them. Right. And um, you know, it was, I think, two years ago that the top four women's cross country programs, one, two, three, four at the NCAA championships were led by women. Mm. And it was incredible. That's never happened before. And when I look at each of those women, I'm like, 
man, I wish that they were there when I first stepped in. And that's even come to rise. They were there, but they weren't glowing the way that they are now and achieving in the same way. So their careers weren't as, you know, in the forefront, but I watch what they do. There's, there's a BYU coach who has won now uh, a national championship in cross country and she's hosting dinner parties. She's like doing all kinds of things that are authentic to her. And she just brings the women in and it's, a, it's really neat to watch. But I think that is something that was missing at least when I first stepped in was seeing what that looked like. And I think we're seeing more of it now. And, and I'm hopeful that that helps women lead a little bit differently. Well, and as both of us, both of you and our team, our conversation is transition <laughs> to next, really to rewire your brain. It is all about giving yourself permission, grace, and that support and the courage to figure out who you are. We have been told by so many people, it's a bit confusing to, we want to please our administrators. We want to please our bosses. We want to please our family. We want to please all these people. It's really tough and super confusing. And so the gift of rewiring our brain is really to own our power and to also be anchored in purpose and to really start to embrace the journey of figuring that out. We don't have to know it today. We can just know that's what we want. Just like we know we want a championship at the beginning of every season. Well, we're at the beginning of a new season in terms of getting rewired and transitioning to next. So what do we want? We want to win in our lives. We know what we want, just like we do in sport. We're going to set some game plans. We're going to practice. We're going to have, you know, competitions to get better and to push ourselves. And we know what we want. So let's just, you know, honor that in terms of knowing that's how we got to be great in sport. We can take that same thing to be great in life rather than saying, well, I have to know all the details to figure out how to get there. Mm -hmm. We tell our athletes to trust the process, right? When they get to us and they're all anxious and really nervous about being great athletes, we say, we've got you. We've got you. We're going to win a championship. We're going to take it one practice at a time. We're going to practice new skills, new drills. We're going to challenge you. It's going to get super uncomfortable. I mean, now, just listen to the, the pep talks or the locker room conversations you have with your athletes. And we now have that opportunity to do that in our lives as women, to really trust the process, to know how we want to define winning in this championship of our life, 3D, in our personal lives, our professional lives, and our philanthropic lives. And, you know, let's go for it with that same intensity and competitive spirit rather than the fear of, Oh, I don't know. I just love the opportunity to be in the same understanding and space as we put our athletes when they come mm -hmm. into us from being a top high school athlete and they come to college and so many dreams and so excited. And then, oh my gosh, it's so different than anything I thought. And the coach loved me in one moment and now they don't. And it's harder than I thought. And I'm competing for a spot. I'm not any good. Like we've got you. You know, what a gift to say, let's just honor the process, get coached up, get your support team, really have that, that place to relate and be able to say, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. What's happening? We've got you. Let's just get better and better every day because that's how we do it with our athletes. We're rookies again. I love it. <laughs> it I can't pretty... just screw up. Okay. Sounds good. Well, through that process, what I found, and I don't know if you've been the same, Julie, because you talked about kind of this pleading with your heart and now looking at your family when you make these decisions, when opportunities arose and you're climbing this ladder, I always felt like I had to say yes. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't realize was I was saying yes, and then doing, making that work all the, all the time. Mm -hmm. Without that 3D model, that's when that personal mm -hmm. starts to drift into professional and you're bringing your heart. So it's kind of a disguise. You don't realize it because you're passionate about what you do. And then now what, and I don't want to say no either for opportunities. And I found it's actually okay. What I think of is that statting, right? What, what would make it a 10? And if I kind of spin through that 3D model, again, you have your family, you only have your 24 hours in a day. What I've started to realize you can do, which sounds so silly, is yes, 
I will do this. And you put kind of your what works for you. And what I am, because I'm asked to do multiple things now, especially in the transition, and I still love where I was. So I don't mind teaching. However, it's okay to say yes, if it, if it fits X, Y, Z. And I think that's something that, and Carla, you probably know more working with your males and your females. Females, there's that gray area of making it a 10 for us. And I don't know if we really tap, it's like the negotiating, right? Negotiating your salary. Well, this is would make it a 10. I'd like this for a support team. And that kind of uncomfortable space of what would actually, what you need is something I have realized a little bit late. However, still going strong that I need to be able to do. And it's not just negotiating with something like a salary, but it's the little things because those 24 hours in a day go quick as well, especially when you have little people um, all around you relying on you as well. Julie, what do you want to say about it? Um, selfishly, all I was thinking was I'll... <laughs> I need to like protect myself in this new space for me, because I think I'm worried about being like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, that sounds cool. I want to try that. Let's do that. Okay. Like I was like, all right, I got to check myself. I need to like say, I'll think about that and like bring it back to this team and, and discuss, because I think when there is a, a I have kind of a white canvas right now mm -hmm. and um, well, and I will soon, but I will soon have a white canvas and I think it's an exciting time, um, but it's also a time where I could be doing a little too much. Um, <clears throat> but I do very much appreciate that, Lynn, because I think it is hard to measure all those opportunities. It is hard to measure, like there will come a point where this one thing that maybe was a higher stat is now a lower stat, right? It doesn't fit in this season, right? Like you might've moved on from that season. And I, I think those moments are hard because sometimes we drag before we get to that space where we're like, oh, this isn't working where I'm starting to dread something. It was once a high stat, it's a lower stat now. Uh, and I think just honoring that is a, is a challenge for us because I, I know that we have this level of loyalty and like, well, I don't want to let go. And, and those, and those types of things, or I haven't, seen it through to the space that I feel like is a perfect 10, but it, the stat always has to be related to you and where you are and where we are in our lives. So Julie, that is such a good example in terms of honoring our growth. I think so many times as women and as high achievers, we think we have to do it constantly and continuously. And that's the gift of seasons. Again, we do not ask our athletes to do the same thing as a freshman and then a sophomore and then a junior and a senior. We actually really enjoy the gift of, well, that was your freshman year or that was your rookie year. What did you learn? What do you want to do differently? So constantly giving us the opportunity to be growing and evolving and not have it be out of guilt or shame and thinking, oh, we can't do that. So as we use our stat tool and we think about what's my stat on that from a scale of one to 10, one is low, 10 is fabulous. 10, one, 10 needs to be anchored really in our definition of success mm -hmm. in terms of our personal life. How are we defining success? And is the choice and the things that I'm saying yes to, does it align with that definition? In our personal life, it's the definition of significance. What really matters to me? And then profession and philanthropically, it's how do I want to give hope? So you have this beautiful canvas of 24 golden nuggets and it's a currency. It's a currency of gold and it's a currency of our whole life. And every day, every conversation, every choice, every proposal that comes in or every offer, we're handing those golden nuggets to them. And we want to make sure that that mosaic is really a 10 for us in terms of every piece that we've handed to somebody in our life today, does it really reflect who am I, what's important to me, rather than an old version of you, or who you think you're supposed to be, or, you know, any of those voices. And I think that's that gift is really 
listening to ourselves rather than all the shoulds or what's this going to look like for other people or what are they going to think and that's that opportunity to really use our own muscle for our own self and to build that beautiful life. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts or questions? Anything you want to add? You know, the, the other thing that I'm as just, again, going back and like watching mm -hmm. those experiences and Julie, you mentioned these powerful women stepping up to the plate and they're performing in their and they're successful. I almost have to remember it is different and it's like little teams as well. So I remember trying to find some of these strong coaches and just kind of like, I, I need mentors. I'm going to go out and find them. And then thinking I could create this relationship right away. However, we were also competing. So we were in this professional dimension and I wanted the, that relationship might not exist that way. So just looking at what those support team structures, where and when they're appropriate and going outside of my sport is something I, I, if I were to reverse and go back, I would have done more because then there's not this threatening competitive, you're getting too tight, we're recruiting the same players because at least in our world, our division one is so small. Um, I found that as a performance barrier. And then within our own department, because these women are trying to figure out how to do this for the first time, in a sense, it was almost that support team is where you got the friction. Mm. So I'm performing in, you know, on the field, off the field academically, you have a NCA woman of the year candidates, right? So you're getting all these things on paper that are working and then you go into your review and your boss who's a who's a woman is powerful. However, the messages she's getting about what I'm doing is it's like you're not nice to your support team. And when you're starting to define, well, what does that look like? Often I was getting rookies around me. And so you have to train them. So it's not just your team, but it's almost like your all these tools that you need to be successful as a program, they're not used to your program or your level. And it's almost readjusting their expectations is, is going to mirror just like our men's lacrosse team that you deal with or our men's basketball team. Like when you put what we're doing side by side, it's the same thing. It's just coming from maybe long hair and short hair and kind of <laughs> like teaching them through that adjustment to, to say, what are you looking for? And let's, let's make this attend together. It's, it's so naturally, I remember just being defensive sometimes and you're like, well, what are you talking about? But then kind of taking that emotion out and you almost have to teach the people around you on the support team, uh, what does that look like? And how do you, how do you get these coaches to glow? So I give that coach that you're speaking about so much credit for inviting others in and kind of normalizing something that actually our male counterparts do so do so well and so frequently. I mean, like your that's what your cigar shops were, right? And that's where so much business happened. And we can do it in a different way. So that was really cool just to hear you say that. And it made me go back to, well, what did it feel like in that process and the people around you and the support structures? So hopefully that's something that we continue to just strengthen mm -hmm. because that, and that's your day, right? Those are the yeah. people that you care about as well. And you think you're all on the same page. So when you hear those people come back, that's what gets you, gets you sometimes. So team, it's up to you. You get to go out and win your week and think about really, how do you want to invest your 24 golden nuggets? That's 24 minutes of time or 24 hours of time. And uh, really just think about what matters to you three-dimensional, personally, professionally, and philanthropically. You're a whole person. Let's bring our whole person into our lives. Honor us, gift us the opportunity to really be as good to ourselves as we are to everybody else. And coach to coach, we're just having these conversations. So Lynn and Julie, thank you so much for the gift of conversation today. Thanks, Carlette. Thank you.
Okay, team, go out and win your week before you and before others. Really bring them into that space of change. We've had a lot to talk about, lots for you to think about, and to be continued as we think about transitioning to next and rewiring our brains. Thank you.